We are going to break down a whole life insurance policy. And today we're gonna to be laser focused today in the next several videos that follow actually, we're gonna be laser focused on the cash value and specifically the compound interest. Meaning when I look at a cash value, life insurance policy, whole life we're focusing on here, as time passes, what happens with any whole life insurance policy? gets better and better. We've mentioned many times, what are the worst years? What's the worst part about any whole life insurance policy? The first year, typically the first and second. What is the best part about any whole life insurance policy? Every year after the first and second, because my base premium starts to come back to work for me and it gets better and better. You know, this video was actually sparked. Uh, someone had reached out and asked us to address the topic of when you take whole life insurance, a lot of times we'll hear the saying that, hey, with an insurance policy, if you give them a dollar, you get two or three dollars back, especially as time passes, which is absolutely true. And then the question raised is, hey, how much money would you want to give the insurance company if you're going to get double or triple the amount back? Well, the answer obviously would be as much as I can give. The thing is, if I'm going to give them a dollar, and get $2 back, am I factoring in the $1 I paid into the policy? That's gotta be factored in. Meaning, if I didn't pay that dollar in, would I still get the same compound interest on my life insurance policy? The answer is yes, and you'll see that. We're gonna get into a lot of detail. We're gonna go through different premium blends, base premium, PUAs, all that good stuff, so we can see the actual data around these policies, and as always, understand how to maximize the cash value and flexibility of any life insurance policy. So let's get into it. To begin, if I take a policy, my money can go where? The base premium or the PUA component. So as I pay money into a policy, here we go. I've got the first two years and then I've got year three forward. I should draw a little arrow there because we're, we're assuming every year after year three. Now I've got my guaranteed rate, which is 4% with most, most companies, and then my surplus and dividend. So to simplify, let's assume I'm going to pay $1,000 per year into the base premium and $1,000 per year into the PUA rider, stands for paid up additions, which by the way, the insurance company considers both of these terms premium. We do draw a distinction here because how my policy functions it's much different when I actually allocate my money to a life insurance policy. So year one, year one and two with a traditional policy, base premium dollars, little to no money in cash value. The reason why is the insurance company is overcharging me for the death benefit up front, the whole life insurance product. PUA dollars, cash value, I pay it in. It's, a, it's in cash value immediately. That's money I have access to, begins to compound sooner. That's the key to accelerating the cash growth, in my opinion. Now, from year three forward, if I'm paying money into the premium and PUA, the same thousand dollars per year, what happens is I see both of them show up. Both of them continue to compound and get stronger and stronger as time passes. Here's where it gets a little, uh, I don't like to use the word complex, but when we take a dividend paying whole life insurance policy, right? If a company has a dividend rate of 5% and their guarantee is 4%, this means that their surplus was 1%, the difference between their total published dividend rate and their guarantee of four. So why I mention that is the guaranteed element within a life insurance policy is treated exactly the same on any cash value that was a result of base premium dollars paid into the policy and PUA dollars paid into the policy. That's exactly the same. When it comes to the surplus, which is the dividend technically, base premium dollars are more favorable, or I should say surplus and dividend dollars are more favorable on base premiums over the long haul. So in theory, you should have more money. And when you look at an illustration in a high dividend rate environment, that proves that out. That, hey, a high, the higher the base premium, the more cash value I should have because dividends are more sensitive to base premiums. Potentially is the key word. And then you still receive these surplus and dividends on PUA dollars, but again, potentially less favorable than base premium dollars when I look at the surplus. Now, 
why I put favorable real results is when we look at policies that are 10 years old, 20 years old, that corporations have been doing forever, we actually see, and it's so interesting to me, the lower the base premium, the higher the actual results, not projections and illustrations, real data, which is so interesting to me when you start breaking that down. So here's the question we often get. Does a higher base premium favor long-term compounding within a cash value life insurance policy? We're gonna show you some data here with several different companies, different case studies in the next several videos, but that's the question. Does a higher base premium result in more favorable long-term cash value? And can I see it? Not just hear about it. Remember the saying, I, I like this when I heard it, that people tend to believe more what they can see, not always what they hear. I gotta have some proof. So, should I give up early cash value for potentially more money long-term? Because that's the question. You know, how I looked at it when I was on the consumer side, when I was an annoying young kid <laughs> that didn't know anything at the time, and I was being told, pay money into a policy, and you want a high base premium. And my question was, okay, why? You're telling me to give money up front, give, give up my cash up front that I worked hard for, by the way, especially when I'm young, like, hey, I'm trying to get going here, and you're telling me to throw it away in the beginning and focus on the long term. Okay. Is there a way, my question was, is there a way I can get the long term without giving up as much up front? That was my question. The answer is yes, we go through that all the time, but I got a million other reasons at the time that didn't give any real data, hence the reason I'm on my own now and don't work for those individuals anymore. So what we're gonna look at here, cash value compounding analysis, that's a nice little buzz phrase, right? Gotta have some fun with this stuff. Case studies we're gonna look at. A 50 year old male, 10 years represents how long the funding period we're gonna, gonna look at, funding a policy for 10 years. Then a 35 year old male paying into the policy up until he's 65, a long period of time, 30 years. Then we've got a little treat. <laughs> a 43 year old female, this is an actual case study uh, with an individual we were working with really, really sharp guy, I wanted to dig into everything. When I say female, and I say sharp guy, he was looking at a policy on his wife in addition to himself. But we looked at several different companies, several different ways to blend a policy. And what you'll see here when we get to this case study is funding the policy for 30 years. And why I've got additional notes here is he wanted to see funding it aggressively for 20 years and then a lower funding schedule for the last 10 years. Now, all of these studies you're going to see, whenever we look at a comparison, it's going to be the same company, same product, same health rating, non-MEC. Now, we, <laughs> this material is not available to the public for a number of reasons, but when we, do a, when we look at an actual MEC test, and, and this is where um, we see a lot of misinformation out there, and I don't think it's misinformation. I think it's just the MEC laws are confusing until you actually get into it to stress test a policy to make sure you don't mech, and this is a good tip if you're an agent in the industry or agent training program goes into this, you've got to stress test the guaranteed values, midpoint values, and present dividend values. And there's ways to study things in between as well. There's ways to forecast, can a mech ever happen, or is there a 1% chance, chance that it can happen? And if that 1% chance exists, well, you've got to eliminate that. Cannot run into those issues with any premium blend. But my point here, that's my long-winded agent training trailer pitch. <laughs> so here, same thing, whenever we look at a comparison, the difference we will see is the base premium and PUA blend. So again, this is gonna be a cash value compounding analysis and really understanding the compounding, meaning if I pay a dollar into a life insurance policy and I get two or three back, whatever it might be, we're gonna provide clarity on that item because it's a compounding within a cash value life insurance policy at a certain point in time. It doesn't matter if I pay a dollar in or not. We're gonna show how that works. But that compounding over the long haul, we're gonna break it down as well to see if I have a low base premium or high base premium, what's the difference? Right, as Jim Rohn would say, what's the difference? But anyway, let's get into the 50-year-old male. So we'll, we'll touch this one, touch on this one here. If you're in a situation 
when you're trying to understand, hey, I'm looking to pay money into a life insurance policy. Maybe I have a concern about death benefit, cash value, could be a number of things, but I'm concerned about making sure I get the absolute best setup for myself based on maximizing the values, but also to accommodate my goals. And you hear <laughs> conflicting opinions and stories from me and different agents, like that's going to happen. Everybody's experience is different depending on who they've work, worked with over time. And most agents are great intention. They're not trying to do anything to, to harm anyone. But as far as independent advice, if you're ever looking for that, who I would recommend in this specialized cash value life insurance world, and he actually does not, he's not affiliated with us. And I say that because he's not gonna promote us in any way, but I have had many discussions with him. Scott Witt, you can look him up uh, at Witt Actuarial Services. He's an actuary and his laser focus, he's one of the few people in the nation that does this, is <laughs> analyze high cash value life insurance policies and teaches people what tweaks to make, what recommendations to make, or what recommendations he gives. If I phrased that right, I didn't. He makes recommendations to maximize the cash value within a life insurance policy and makes sure that it fits within their goal, goals. So he is fee only, he's a fiduciary, fee only insurance advisor, sharp guy, actuary by trade, still practices, um, very good at what he does. But if you're in that position, I'd highly recommend him. Now, on to the case study, if you're just like looking at the numbers. So this is where it gets fun. So as usual, I wanna look at several different options, and we're gonna look at the dividend study first. So what we've got here is 10-year funding, higher amount, 100,000 per year. He can pay in longer, but he doesn't want to pay once he hits age 60. He's like, hey, I, I wanna be done. Give me the option to still pay some, but I wanna be done. Okay, 100,000 going in. So as usual, we've got our different designs. We've got a 1090. A 2575, and then a 5050. And the purpose of this here, because when we hear the whole compounding argument, often we'll hear that a higher base premium will result in greater compounding over time. Is that true? If I have a higher base premium? Like, come on, man, is it true? That's all I wanna know and prove it to me. That's, that was young Steve asking people. So let's take a look here. 100,000 per year going into a policy. Highlighted in yellow is your break even point. If you are in a position or if you're looking at this and saying, just show me what gives me the most cash value, I would look at the cash value columns and let you know this will do that. But let's get into it here. This column, net compounding. What do I mean by net compounding? Let me know if you've ever seen or heard this. I was guilty of this at one point in my career as well. Let's look at year nine to 10. My cash value in year nine is $1,014,000. I pay in $100,000 and it grows to $1,152,000. Increased value. So look, I gave him $100,000 and I got what, 138 back, look at that. The thing is, what I don't really like about that is when you look at an actual policy here, I paid in $100,000, my cash grew from 1014 to 152. Net compounding, $38,611. That means that's what I actually earned after I back out what I paid into the policy. To demonstrate, let's take a look here. So what do we got? 1152, 835, minus 1014, 224, equals 138,611. Okay, let's deduct the actual payment I paid into the policy. $38,611. Did I give the company a dollar and get a dollar 40 back? 
No, I gave him a dollar. I got my dollar back. But what I actually got netting the compound interest, $38,000. Okay. And what's interesting about that is look at the next year. I pay nothing into the policy. Pace stays about the same. Isn't that interesting? Still compounding. Still going up each year. So interesting. Let's look at the higher base premiums. 25,000. So I'm paying in the exact same 100K per year, identical out of pockets. What's the difference though? A little bit delayed break even. Time goes by. Here's what I'm interested in. Let's look at year 10. Let's do the exact same thing here. I paid in 100. It grew by 135,000. 978 to 113. However, 100 of that was my actual payment. I can't count that and say that's what the insurance company, in. no, like I, I paid it in. $35,000. So by year 10, I had a $25,000 base premium and that did not produce me more compounding than the $10,000 base premium. Let's look at the 50 k 31,000, much less. Let's go down. 20 years, when this individual is 69 years old. So he's not paying anything in anymore. Net compounding, 62,000. 60,000 to 25, 58. Same thing all the way down. And then if we do our normal thing, here's what we wanted to look at. All right, so again, because this stuff we can get deep fast, but what I like to look at is what nets me the most cash value. You know, over the years of being in this business, and it started when we worked with corporations, I was the back office guy, but what the corporation was interested in was maximum upfront cash value for the balance sheet, but they looked very closely at the long term as well, saying, hey, we want to make sure that we're still performing here, because other companies have shown us that it's possible. Give us your best leg. All right. Best leg forward, I should say. So what we've got here, 1090 compared to the 2575. Same company product, health rating, age, all that good stuff, $153,000 more. Compared to the 50, 50-50, $317,000 more. So my thing is, if cash value is my focus, these guys gave me higher death benefits up front, not long term. If we're looking at the long term, but up front, the higher blends did give me higher base pre I mean, higher death benefits at one point in time. In the very beginning, this had a term rider, which inflated it a little bit. But for a time, those had more favorable death benefits. But overall, looking at the long-term value, which one? Okay, this is dividends. Now, dividends are all potential, right? How about the guarantees? Here's, here's some, uh, <laughs> some sales talk. If you're going to purchase a policy, do you want to purchase it based off of what's not guaranteed or what's guaranteed? Yeah, guaranteed. And then if it does any better, I'm happy. What I don't want to do, and this is where we see a lot of buyer's remorse in the industry, is individuals buy off of the illustration, the numbers look great, and then time passes, it underperforms, under delivers, maybe they run into a mech, something like that happens, and then they've got buyer's remorse and the industry gets a bad rap. That's what happens in this industry. So you've got to prevent it up front and information is the best way to prevent it. Accurate information, I should say. And we've known the big guys, corporations, wealthy banks have done it forever. So why not copy them? So this is the exact same thing Jump the gun here, Steve. I get too excited with these spreadsheets, man. Guaranteed study. And if you'd like the actual data from the illustrations directly from the insurance carrier, no third party software is used by our firm. That's in our membership program and agent training and agent training program. Okay, so same thing, identical policies. Same company, all that good stuff. Do I see a difference here? Or can I make a case for a higher base premium? And again, 
This, let me just back up here. This, with this particular company, this 25-75 split, might be favorable. We've put in this, we've put in, we've put this in force for individuals before after analyzing all the options because the particular company we're using might not have the same degree of long-term flexibility if I want to fund it forever. So that's where our goals and what we're looking for comes into play as well. There's no one option better than the other. However, if I want to understand how to maximize cash value, well, then there is. Time passes. What do I got? Similar story, right? It's so interesting here. The reason the death benefits are not appreciating is because I'm looking at the guarantees here. Look at that. <laughs> Man, I love this stuff. Big difference. How about the death benefit? Right, when we look at legacy planning, <laughs> I got more cash up front and more death benefit long term and more cash long term. That's the kind of stuff that whether I go with that option or not, I want to see it. That's that's where we're coming from. See the options. This way I don't buy something, find out after the fact, oh man, I wish I would have done something differently. So I hope that you enjoyed the overview. And 50 year old case study. Again, I, I definitely reach out to him if you'd like a um, opinion or advice from someone not trying to sell a policy by any means. I mean, I'll state that we always do what's in the client's best interest going through all the options, but still talking to a fee only insurance advisor gives you that, how do I put it, that outside perspective. He's got zero motive. He's paid fee only, kind of like an attorney, regardless if we decide to move forward or not. So that was our first case study. We'll move into the next two, next couple of videos. As always, uh, thank you so much for watching. Hope this helps and we will talk to you soon. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.